Here we are with the skeleton done. Let me give you a quick look at the final architecture for it. So at the base of the skeleton, I have the hip that's a parent of everything. Then under it, you will find the chest, the head, and the head is its own branch. The chest is going to be a parent for both of the arms. So you have arm R and arm L under it. And the thighs are going to be children of the hips. They are going to move with the hips, but not with the chest for obvious reasons. If you still have the warnings on the bones, you need to select the skeleton 2D, go to the menu and click on make rest pose from the bone. This option is going to make it so whenever you modify the skeleton in whatever way, when you go back to the skeleton 2D, you can reset the character to the saved rest pose. With that done, you can fold the skeleton 2D and we are going to bind our polygons to the skeleton. If you select any of the polygons in the skeleton category in the inspector, you can assign a skeleton to them. You want to do that and to select the skeleton 2D. We're going to have to do that for each of the nodes, so I'll do it really quickly, accelerate that part and be right back. With the skeleton assigned to all of the nodes, we then have to do one more operation to go to the UV tab, to the bones tab, and to click the sync bones to polygon button. It's going to populate the list of bones that we can then use to influence our polygon. Here I have the arm. Again, in the bones tab, this is the one we're going to use to set the influence of each bone over our polygons. You have a projection, a representation of the skeleton over the character. This will help you to select a bone in the list on the right and ensure that this is one of the bones that you want to map to your skeleton. You can see that I already have some influences here that are properly set, but I'm going to erase them really quickly to show you how to properly set your bone influences and to get mesh deform working. So select for the arm, I'm going to select the arm L bone. And I want to click the white icon, which allows us to add influence to the bone. The slider next to it is going to control the strength of the influence. If I set it to be pretty low, it's going to slowly make the vertices look more and more white. The white tone here means that this joint, this bone, is going to move and rotate these vertices and scale them as well. Most of the time, you can work with the slider at the maximum and click and drag over the vertices you want it to influence. You can change the radius of the brush, the transparent circle you can see on the view, make it bigger to make it a little easier to set the influence on the bones, or you can lower the size for more precision. Here's now how you create nice transitions in your deformation, because right now the influence is going to be 100% over the white vertices meaning that if I go back to the view and select the corresponding bone, this one, and I rotate it, you can see that the vertices I've bound to it are going to rotate and move with it. But the rest of the arm is going to stay in place because it's not bound to anything. So let's select the polygon again, arm left, go back to the UV editor, and then we want to add influences on the forearm. And you want it to take all the vertices down to the wrist. Now note that both the arm L and forearm L have these vertices around the elbow white, pure white. They are going to share this influence. Godot is going to split the influence, weigh them per bone, meaning that the forearm L will have a 50% influence on, let me lower the size of that brush, 
on these two vertices on either side of the elbow and arm L will have 50% influence over them. Lastly, I'm going to set the vertices on the hand on the wrist and click OK. And from there, the influences on the bones will already work. So you can select any bone and press E to rotate it. If I rotate the arm L, it's going to work as you'd expect. It's going to rotate the entire arm. For arm, the deformation starts and the problem start to happen. You can see the deformation is a bit awkward. There's shrinking in the polygon, and this is natural in 3D until you add internal vertices. The hand, it's even worse. So that's what we're going to see next. Before we do that, we're going to keep working on the arm. Note that you have to do this setup to do this work for each of the components of your character. You want to go to the UVs, go to the Bones tab, sync the bones to the polygon, and then you select the bones you want to have influence the character. For the hip, I'm going to select the hip area, up to these two vertices, then the chest is going to influence this area above the hips a little bit, and the rest of the polygon. The chest doesn't need to influence the hip area and vice versa, because when you rotate the hip, it's going to rotate the chest at the same time. You can then click OK, select the bones to test the deformation, and you will see the chest deform. There again, it's a bit awkward because we have to add internal vertices, and that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to go back to my arm left and open the UV editor once again. Then we want to go back to the points tab. This is the tab that we'll use to add internal vertices to add points to our shape. Although we drew the outline of the mesh, we want to add a few vertices inside of the mesh to fluidify, to improve the deformation. To do so, you have to use this tool here, pencil with a little dot. We're going to click on that tool, and when you click on the mesh in the viewport, it's going to add blue dots, internal vertices. You want to add a few of these in the areas where the deformation is pretty bad, and in general you want to create stripes of polygons around the joint areas. For instance, around the elbow, but also around the wrist. I'm going to show you two very basic setups with three vertices on either case, using triangles and quads to improve the deformation. This is very similar to how you create a nice deformation on a low poly 3D character. Once you've added your vertices, you have the cross icon with the little dot that allows you to remove these internal vertices, if you so desire. I'm going to add these back. And finally, you can use, once again, the Move tool and click and drag on any of the vertices to reposition them. So I'm going to create a fairly thin area around the wrist here to have some decent deformation. Move that dot as well, you'll see why in a second. So now we place these points. If you were to click OK and go back to the view, the character would not deform properly. Instead, we want to go to the Polygons tab, and this is the tab you will use to create polygons. And we have to create them by hand, which is the limitation of the tool at the moment. But to do so, to create polygons, you click on vertices one after the other. Most of the time, you will want to create quads like so, polygons that have four sides. But sometimes you can create n-gons, polygons with more than four sides, or triangles work well in games. Each of the quads you are going to create, as far as the GPU is concerned, are going to be triangles, made of two triangles, actually. For the elbow, I'm going to create horizontal stripes like these. They're not going to give us a perfect deformation, but it's already going to be much better than what we had at first, the completely messed up results. Then, around the wrist, 
I'm going to create triangles. This is another basic setup that you can use to improve the transition around the wrist. It's going to give us slightly more definition to deform the wrist area. Considering that the character is a robot though, the thing is you don't want the wrist to deform that much and you might want the wrist to be a separate sprite or the hand to be a separate sprite. But for the example, we're going to use the character as it is. Now looking at the mesh, so I've done a bit of 3D in the past and I can tell you that it's not going to deform too well. I want to move these vertices up and I would want to add a few vertices around here. The thing is we don't have tools to cut edge loops like in a 3D program, for example. We don't have tools to add vertices once we created the polygons. So it's a little inconvenient at the moment. We don't have, as far as I know, an easy way to edit these meshes in Blender, for example, and import them in Godot as a 2D skeleton. For 3D, there's some importer built in, but for 2D, as far as I know, it doesn't exist just yet. It'll probably come in the future though. Anyway, with that, you want to go back to the Bones tab, select the bones that should influence that part of the character, so arm left to start with, and you'll see that our new vertices are not being influenced by the bone. So we want to add them like we did before. We want to add the vertices at the top of the wrist and at the bottom of the elbow, and for the hand, we want to add the two new vertices in the middle of the wrist. Press OK to confirm that. And now, if I select the arm again, rotate it, select the forearm, let's see. It's deforming a lot better already. We can see if we zoom in on the elbow, because we have a 3D mesh here, you can see the cut where we added the stripes of polygons, and this is a limit due to the low definition of our mesh. The more stripes of polygons you're going to add, the smoother the deformation will look. But as we have to create them by hand, each of the polygons, it's a bit time consuming. That's why I'm using a minimal setup here. Now we have done that, I want to add a little troubleshooting bit of info. If I select the arm, you can see there's a little bit of pixel deformation on the sprite itself. I want to fix that. I want to fix how the sprite is being mapped on the polygon. Once you created polygons, the engine is going to create UV coordinates for them. The UVs are a set of coordinates that the engine uses to map the pixels from your image onto the 3D mesh, onto the, the mesh of vertices. It's in 2D in this case, but it is still some mesh data. That's why you have a UV tab at the top left of the polygon editor. If you click on that, you might see that the points tab and the UV tab show different polygons. This is because when we edit the polygon, Godot doesn't recreate the UV coordinates that are a separate set of coordinates you use to create your meshes. The thing is, sometimes you don't want the UVs and the polygons to be exactly the same, to have some nice effects or control on how the texture will display on the polygons. But in this case, we want that to be the case. So let's go back to the UV tab and in the edit menu, select polygon to UV. It's going to reuse the polygon data as the UV mapping data. If you click on that and go back to the view, the sprite will now be fixed. It will be restored to its original look. And with that, we have one limb done. You want to repeat the same process for all of them. Yes, it's going to take a, a little while and I'll let you do so because it's always the same process and it would just make the video very long. But once you are done, you will be able to animate the bones on your character. As a bonus, let's see how to use the IK feature in Godot 
to make it so we can move the hand and the arm will follow the character nicely. In Godot 3.1, the option to work with the IK chains has not changed compared to the older versions, so it can feel a little clunky. Let me show you what I mean by that. You have a bone icon when you select a bone 2D that will allow you to create IK chains. And if you go to the manual, it will tell you that you have to select the chain and click on make IK chain. But at this point, it's not going to work as you'd expect. Normally at this point, it should animate the elbow and rotate the arm as I move the hand. This is what we want to do with the IK chain. And right now it does not. What you have to do is just like in older versions of Godot, you still have to make custom bones from the selected nodes. So you select the bones that you want to use IK with and click on that option. At this point, you will get the IK working as you'd expect. So by moving the hand, the entire chain of bones that leads to it is going to rotate naturally. And this is the recommended way to animate arms, but also legs in this case. Note one limitation of the IKs in Godot, you don't have a pole right now, so you don't have a way to force the elbow to always keep the same orientation or a way to control the orientation of the arm and the elbow like you would have in Blender in a 3D program, but also in a program like Spine. So when you animate, sometimes it can be a little tricky if you stretch the arm and then you bend it again, it can bend in the wrong direction. It depends on how you move the mouse cursor. So you want to make the hand go above the elbow to have it bend in the right direction. There again, it's part of these improvements that should come with time as more animators start to work with Godot. That's how it is in 3.1 right now. But with that, you know how to create a deformable character in Godot. As you can see, the workflow is not ideal just yet if you're coming from a 3D package or a professional animation program, but it keeps getting better version after version. And if you're an animator, a professional, please go ahead and give some feedback to the developers and contributors in the issue tracker because there are always people looking to improve the user experience in the engine. That said, I want to thank you kindly for watching and I'll let you pick another tutorial to learn from. See you soon.